Thank you. Good evening, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing the live stream of this meeting. My name is Councillor Anna Bradnam. I'm the Chair of South Cambridgeshire District Council, and my Vice Chair is Councillor Peter Fain. Good evening, Peter Fain, Shop of Ward. Thank you. May I start the, mo the meeting with a moment's quiet reflection upon the tragic death of Sir David Ames, MP? Thank you, members. I'm aware that Councillor Heather Williams would like to say a few words, and if there are others who would like to speak, then I would happy for you to do so. Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, the first thing that I will read is a message from Grenville Chamberlain, who's unfortunately not able to be with us, but has known Sir David for over 20 years. <coughs> It was with great shock and sadness that I learned of the passing of Sir David Amos. I first met David over 25 years ago and have met him regularly since that first meeting. I've always been well aware of his dedication to his beliefs and to his constituents. The Caravan and Motorhome Club, of which I am chairman, is grateful for its long association with Sir David as parliamentary advisor. He was a staunch supporter of the UK holiday industry and caravanning. His advocacy was greatly appreciated. Sir David met many hundreds of members and certificated location owners when hosting the club's annual CL of the Year Awards at the Houses of Parliament. My sincerest condolences are with Sir David's wife, Julia, his family, friends and colleagues. He will be greatly missed. Chair, and I'll read my words. Thank you. Many of us were deeply saddened by the passing of James Brokenshire. I had the pleasure of meeting James, and he was a true gentleman. But the death of Sir David Amos is one that has truly shocked us all. Sir David gave so much of his life to public service, representing and standing up for people, something that all of us in this room can identify with. Sir David was not lost, but taken from us. However, what he stood for will not be taken or lost while elected representatives continue to serve and, like Sir David, strive to make a better world for ourselves and generations to come. Our thoughts, of course, lie with the families and friends who grieve and mourn their losses. I would ask members to also think of a community, one like ours here, that has had the ground they walk on shattered. May they also find the strength to support one another and recover from these dark days. We all have a responsibility to encourage and promote a tolerant society. That it is okay and indeed healthy for people to have different views. That someone is not wholly bad or good for having a different opinion. We in this chamber will have robust and passionate debate, but there should never be hatred aggression or intimidation shown to those who hold views different from our own. Sir David was a man of strong faith, Chair, so I feel it's appropriate that I should end with a reading from Romans chapter 5, para 2 to 5. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Heather Williams. Councillor Bridget Smith, leader. 
Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, I won't repeat the eloquent words of uh, Councillor Williams and Councillor Chamberlain. Um, they have expressed all of our feelings um, very, very appropriately. But last week's tragedy affects us all, direct attack on democracy, and we can't allow that to happen, and we can't allow it to perpetuate. Uh, our hearts bleed for his family and the loss for his constituents and his friends. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry that there are people in this chamber who are directly affected as they were his friends. So it's horrible. And let's, you know, let's hope we can all move forward and find something positive out of something that's just so awful. Thank you, Leader. Um, I had thought that Councillor Cathcart may wish to speak, but he's dialing in and I suspect he may not have been able to join us. No, okay. So thank you very much, members. Okay, Councillor Clayton, please do go ahead. Thank you, yeah. I, um, Councillor Cathcart, Nigel would, would um, do a far better job of this than me He's, um, as the leader of the Labour group. But I, when I saw the news, I genuinely had a sharp intake of, of breath at, at the shock of it. And now working in an area that saw the death of Joe Cox during the Brexit um, voting and campaigning, I know the impact that it has on a local community, the local community of an MP in such a horrific situation. And I just want to echo the words of uh, of the leader in that hopefully something positive can come from this. I know that his family are already asking for for unity and not for uh, hatred and and anger to be misdirected of course feel there'll be lots and lots of feelings uh, for all sorts of people and for people who knew sir david personally um but i'll just echo those words that i hope something um in the way that something positive uh, came out of the, the horrendous situation around joe cox with the joe cox foundation that something positive can come out of this and and hopefully bring people together in some way thank you I too heard the family calling that people should put their differences to one side and work together for the best. Uh, so let's try to do that this evening, members. Moving on. May I now make some housekeeping around announcements, including important safety information for those present in person. In attending the meeting in person, we ask that where possible you wear a face covering at all times. Please also keep to the one-way system in the chamber and please use the hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes provided. Whether present in the chamber or virtually, please make sure that you only switch your microphone on when invited to speak. Those in the room, please note it's advisable when speaking to speak into your microphone. So you should keep them close to you on your desk and speak very clearly. Those who are participating virtually, please note it's helpful if you use a microphone and also please do speak slowly and clearly in case the connection is not good. Please also ensure that all other devices are switched to silent or off so that they do not interrupt proceedings. Only those members present in the chamber will be able to move and second motions and vote. Members present virtually may speak in the debate. Are there any members online for this meeting who would like to introduce themselves now? No requests. Somebody's shaking their head. That looks like Councillor Howell. <laughs> Please would members who are attending virtually indicate a wish to speak through a chat message in the Teams meeting. Those present in the council chamber should indicate their wish to speak by raising their hand. I'll ask my vice chair to keep a note of the order of speakers, both virtually and in the room. If we're required to move to a vote and there is not clear affirmation, I will state that a, record, uh, sorry, excuse me, that a recorded vote is to be taken. Members in the chamber will then vote electronically, selecting for, against, or abstain. The result will be displayed. Those present, including any members of the public observing or any public speakers, are asked to note that this meeting is being filmed and live streamed. 
and by your presence you are deemed to have consented to be filmed and to the use of those images and sound recordings for a webcast. May I remind police members that when speaking, they should not disclose any personal information of any individual, as this might infringe the rights of that individual and breach the Data Protection Act. Finally, may I remind members that you are required to address the meeting through the chair. Officers have confirmed that the meeting is court and that we can proceed. As our microphones are on tables and standing to speak means projecting the voice more, in the interests both of safety and practicality, I propose that Standing Order 21.2, that is standing to speak, be suspended for the duration of the meeting. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Smith, thank you. Uh, and so, do, members, does anybody wish to vote against that motion? Thank you very much. So, members, uh, you're prepared to take this decision by affirmation. Thank you. And does anybody wish to vote against the proposal? Does anybody wish to abstain? No, thank you. So the motion is passed uh, by affirmation. Thank you very much. So moving on to item one, apologies. Um, are there any apologies for absence, please? Uh, would Democratic Services? Thank you, Chair. Yes, you. we have apologies from Councillor Grenville Chamberlain, Councillor Sarah Chung Johnson, Councillor Claire Delderfield, Councillor Joe Hales. Councillor Alex Pallion, Councillor Judith Rippert, and Councillor Dr. Ian Solon. Thank you. Could I ask if we also had um, apologies from Councillor Bearpark? Yes, but he's actually present uh, virtually, okay. so uh, Thank I you didn't very much. read those out. Councillor Heather Williams. Um, apologies from Councillor Graham Cohen. He was hoping to be here, but he's been caught up with patients, so not going to make it tonight. Thank you very much, Councillor Heather Williams. Uh, Councillor Bill Handley. Apologies from Councillor Dawn Percival. Thank you very much, Councillor Dawn Percival. Okay, I see no other hands. Thank you very much. De declarations of interest then. Do any members have any interest to declare in relation to the item of business on this agenda? And if an interest subsequently becomes apparent later in the meeting, please would you raise it at that point? I think it's fair to say this probably. We all have an interest in this item, do we not? Okay. Item three, then, audit of the 2018-19 accounts, which is on pages one to nine of our agenda this evening. Members will be aware uh, that I called this extraordinary meeting at the request of the Conservative group to discuss the 2018-19 accounts. A report on the subject has been prepared by the Head of Finance, which is contained within the agenda pack, and may I invite Councillor Heather Williams, as Leader of the Opposition, to briefly explain why she called me to call for this meeting today. Thank you, Chair. And the reasons that uh, the Conservative Group called for this meeting was, given the deadline set by the external auditors, and the exceptional position the council finds itself in, we believe the residents would rightly expect elected representatives to discuss the report. It's only right that all councillors are given the opportunity to hear an explanation, be updated, and question the administration on the matter. While updated, updating could have been done privately, we believe that this should be done in full, uh, full public view, for full openness and transparency, hence the call for a public meeting. Thank you, Councillor Heather Williams. Um, I now call upon, upon Councillor John Williams as the lead member for finance to present the report on the audit of the 2018-19 accounts as stated in the papers. Thank you, Chair. Uh, our residents expect us to provide audited accounts as quickly as possible so that they can be reassured their council tax money is being spent wisely and I apologise that we have not been able to do that yet. With the 2017-18 accounts being signed off by the external auditor in July last year, after two years of auditing, the soonest we could start on the 2018-19 accounts 
was last September, and at that time, the Council's Audit and Corporate Governance Committee was told the aim was to have those accounts signed off by July this year. As you can see from the reports before you, additional resources were put in place, but in particular, we misjudged the amount of work involved to correct discrepancies in the Council's asset register, some of which go back to 2009. Quite rightly, the external auditor has picked up us up on these discrepancies. The asset register is a detailed list of thousands of council-owned assets, such as property and lands and their current values, and the audit of the 2018-19 accounts coincided with transferring the details of these assets from many outdated sources going back to 2007 to a single fit-for-purpose register that was compliant with current local government accountancy rules. We reported to the Audit and Corporate Governance Committee in July that because of discrepancies found in the asset register, the sign-off would be de delayed to October. In particular, the external auditor had asked us to explain the valuation of 259 housing assets that had been given a nil value in the past. So as you can see in the report, we could identify an account for all but 15 of these assets. And to conclude the work, we had to look for sufficient information to allow an external valuer to complete the work on these 15 assets. Some of this involved physical inspections. Until this work was completed and the asset register adjusted, we could not proceed with the other outstanding aspects of the audit. As you can see, in September, we informed the Audit and Corporate Governance Committee that because of this, we would not we would now be looking at November for the sign-off. It was at this meeting that the external auditor announced that it would take further measures under its powers to bring the matter to the attention of a full meeting of this council unless it received the outstanding information it required within 14 days. I'm pleased to say we have since been informed in writing by the external auditor that they have received such information and that we are on course to sign off the 2018 accounts in November. As to the remaining audits of the 2019-20 and 2020-21 accounts, we are bringing in more resource and are agreeing a work schedule with the external auditor to successfully complete these audits as soon as possible. And I do hope, and the external auditor has given us a date uh, of next September, but I do hope that we can meet that as, as near as possible to that date. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor John Williams. Um, and do you have a proposal for the recommendation? But are you proposing the motion, which is on the recommendation item two on... Yes, I'm proposing the motion. We are Thank you very proposal. much. And do you have a seconder? Councillor Neil Goff, thank you very much. Councillor Goff, do you wish to reserve your right to speak at the end of the debate? I will. Thank you. Thank you. Um, members, before we move into debate, um, I'm aware we may have an amendment to that motion. Councillor Heather Williams. Yes, we've proposed an amendment, Chair, which has been circulated, obviously. Thank you very much. So I believe... Uh, Aaron uh, is in a position to present that to us. Thank you. So for the sake of people who might not be able to read it, I'll just read that out, which is uh, the recommendation originally was to note the position on the audit of the accounts for 2018-19, and additional wording has been added which says, and so it's to note the position on the audit of the accounts for 2018-19, and the Cabinet's commitment to resolving the issues, giving as much resource as is needed to get the accounts up to date by October 2022, subject to external auditors' questions and requests. Uh, Councillor John Williams, are you happy to accept that? Sorry. Do you have a seconder for that amendment? Councillor, right, thank you very much. Councillor John Williams, are you 
Yes, I'm happy to accept that. So this becomes the substantive uh, motion then. So, so we're open for debate then, members. Would anybody like to speak? No. Councillor Ellington. Thank you, Chair. Over my working life, I've always found that continuity has been the most important element in any provision of service or care. It must take time to get to know all the various accounts, to understand the history, to know where to concentrate effort and when to ask the additional for additional resources. Also, it takes time for new accountants to establish good working relationships with the councillors as well as their staff. And of course, it also places great responsibility on the lead member to know his portfolio in order to initiate new accountants, especially interim ones who may leave without explaining their workings. I would like to ask the lead member for finance how many interim accountants have been in post over the last three and a half years when these audit issues were first raised as a problem. Uh, one, Mr. Palmer, who was the interim accountant after Mr. Collier left and before the appointment of Mr. Maddox. Point of information, Chair. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you. I think there might have been a misunderstanding in the question. It wasn't about Section 151 officers, it's about accountants. And I know we've had at least several interim chief accountants as well, so the number must be more than one. Um, Mr. Maddox, Mr. Maddox, could you help with that? So, <coughs> so obviously, um, yeah, there was uh, Paul Palmer. As regards the um, uh, servicing the audit, we have gotten to, we've got two interim accountants at the moment. Prior to that, we had an interim as well. I'm not aware of any other interims that have been uh, over the past three and a half years. I don't know. Thank you. Chair, can I ask, I mean, what account, I mean, I, I'm assuming that the question is regarding the 2018-19 accounts. If the question is asking about accounts previous to that, then obviously I can't answer that because I was not in place at that time. Point of information, Chair. Councillor Heather Williams. I believe Councillor Ellington's question was how many interims have there been over the last three and a half years, which has been under the I think that's control. been answered by Peter Maddock, has it not? Um, for the period that Mr Maddock has been here, but we don't have the figure for the period in between. I can certainly try and find that out. Yeah. Okay, well, it, we, can, we can find that out, uh, and it sounds as if Peter Maddock is happy to provide that information. Do we have any other questions? Uh, Councillor Betson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to ask how much extra in external auditors' fees will the Council spend due to these delays? It has been three and a half years that you've, you've been able to uh, get hold of these accounts, and I was just wondering if the lead member for finance is considering this position after three and a half years. Thank you. Councillor Betson, Councillor John Williams. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair. We have to remember that we couldn't start auditing the 2018-19 accounts until the 2017-18 accounts had been signed off, and they were not signed off until last July. So we could not audit. We didn't have three and a half years to audit these accounts. We had. We had since last September to audit the 2018-19 accounts. Thank you, Councillor Williams. And Councillor Tom Bygott. Oh, sorry, did you want no. to come back, Councillor Benson? Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, thank you. Um, 
the question actually was how much extra in external auditors' fees will the council spend due to these delays? That was the original question. Thank you. Um, that, that will obviously be a matter of discussion between us and the external auditors when this is finished. Thank you, Councillor John Williams. Councillor Tom Bygott. Thank you, Chairman. As my colleague, Councillor Ellington, uh, pointed out, Continuity is very important for the running of any organization. How much money has been spent on the paying off by redundancy, early pension access, and gardening leave of senior staff that has led to a lack of continuity in this organization? Councillor John Williams. Uh, is, is this is the member referring to the 2018-19 accounts, which is what this motion is about? If not, then, you know, we are here to discuss the 2018-19 accounts. That is what the motion is about. If you want to have details about other matters of accounting, then we're happy to provide that information, but I'm not in a position to respond at this meeting. Thank you. So it sounds as if that information would be provided if you wish for it. That's what I got. Yes, yeah, so I, I believe it was established by the, the earlier question that uh, the period of three and a half years is relevant to, uh, to this meeting as the period uh, during which all this needs to work being undertaken. But Councillor Bygott, with due respect, as Councillor John Williams has pointed out, this meeting was called to consider the 2018-19 accounts. We, which could only be change. signed off once the previous accounts were um, signed off in, in September 2020. Thank you for the information. Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the external auditor's report. The external auditor's report refers to previous years and also the fact that it wasn't able to be completed or even able to start till the 2018 accounts was completed well, that is relevant because that has created significant delays to the starting of it. Therefore, it does apply. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Heather Williams. Councillor John Williams. Uh, can I point out that the 2017-18 accounts refers to a period of the previous administration that the reason it took two years was because the external order, auditor did not think that those accounts were of a standard to be audited within the required time. And therefore, they took a lot longer to audit. And as you know, you cannot audit a later set of accounts until you have a closing balance from the previous accounts. And we could not have a balance that the external auditor was happy with until the audit was signed off last July. So these questions that are being put to me should be put to the previous administration. Point of information, Chair. Councillor Heather Williams. It was the responsibility of this administration for the production of those final accounts. While the financial period was of the previous administration, it was the responsibility of this administration to complete those accounts. Councillor John Williams. And we did keep complete those accounts as soon as possible but it involved an awful lot of work to bring them up to a standard that the external accounts was happy with. Uh, Councillor Richard Williams. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and thank you to the lead cabinet member for their update. I think the lead cabinet member said he was expecting the audit to be complete in um, November. Can I just ask a few points of, of, of clarification? Um, you, you said you've got written um, confirmation from the auditors that they've got the information they want. Can I just clarify whether that they've confirmed that that is sufficient information, um, or are they likely to come back and ask for um, clarifications? Um, and if they do ask for clarifications, are we confident that we would be able to respond to those promptly um, and that uh, the November deadline wouldn't slip, or the November date wouldn't slip? Thank you. Councillor John Williams. Um, 
I can refer you to a um, email that's written to the chief executive where they say that they are satisfied that they have received the questions to the answers that they asked for at the call at the audit and corporate governance meeting, which caused them to ask for those questions to be answered within 14 days of that meeting. We have answered those questions within 14 days of that meeting. I don't know if uh, Mr. Maddox has a further update on the current situation. Mr. Maddox, would you Thank like you. To um, <clears throat> so um, we, have a, we have got an update. Um, so they have all the information, but we, we are aware and that they will be doing some sample checking on the information that they've got. So there will be further queries and questions, no doubt, as a result of that. Uh, and that work will be carried out between now and the end of the month. So, subject to that being concluded successfully, we can then move to the stage of reviewing those accounts uh, and updating all of the statements, uh, and then they will have reviews as well. So, I still believe we're on target to hit nearly to end of November for this. Thank you, Mr. Murdoch. Uh, Councillor Nick Wright. Thank you, Chairman, and through you, Chairman, um, my question is that given that at the audit meeting where this was discussed, the lead member did not utter hardly one word. As a leader and other cabinet members, given the external auditors, the insurance they need that the council is taking this seriously. And also, the lead member for finance talked about, in his opening statement, talked about misjudgments and more resources. Could you tell us what those misjudgments were and what more resources he's allocated? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor John Williams. Okay, well, first of all, um, going back to that meeting, the reason I didn't say anything, because I didn't think it would be appropriate for me to be arguing with EW in public at that meeting. It would not have served anybody any um, you know, purpose whatsoever. The head of finance, Mr. Maddox, is my, my fullest you know, um, regard. And, but to have challenged EY at that meeting on some aspects would not have been productive, would not have been the, op the right opportunity to have done that. Um, on, on the matter of additional resources, as I said, I don't think until we started to transfer the asset register, we were not aware of the extent of the discrepancies that there were that had built up over a number of years, decade uh, or so, uh, in that register. And it is in ex acceptable, I think, that the council should ensure that that asset register is fit for purpose and correct before going forward. We obviously cannot conjure up people out of thin air. We needed some more uh, support and we are organizing that support, but you cannot suddenly go and find an accountant that has experience of registers at such short notice. And so it did take some time for us to be able to conduct the review of the asset register and to organize an independent valuation of those assets that um, we could not, um, we, we could not confirm had the value that they had been given in the asset register. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Did you want to come back on that? Thank you. Through you, Chair. Um, you didn't give me any of your... You did say you had made misjudgments, or there had been misjudgments, but you didn't give clear examples of what they were. And also, you know, you have been a member of this council, I, I don't know what year, but for many years, and external auditors have audited this acceptable and signed off these accounts every year till this administration came in, I think, with one exception. And, uh, you know, as a... 
15 years. Three, yes, three years, Chair. I did start three years. Three years. But what I'm asking is, you know, as a member of the council, you know, at any previous point, him, he, uh, Councillor Williams, could have challenged it, you know, if it had been an issue. Uh, had the previous external auditors raised it in any of those years you mentioned since 2007, which they didn't, as I understand. Um, so it's one external auditor. And as we were all, you know, many of us were councillors during those years, and none of us picked it up either. So, you know, we, we are where we are, and the present administration has to deal with this issue. So I'm Thanks. coming back to my point. You know, I want to know where the, the misjudgments are. Has there been enough resources put in over this length of time to deal with these extra issues? Thank you for and what were they? Thank you. Councillor John Williams. Well, to go back, actually, um, this council didn't meet its audit um, deadlines for about three audits, actually, before uh, we took over. Um, so this goes back quite a long time, actually. And having sat on the previous audit and governance committee, although it wasn't called that at the time when we were in opposition, um, I can tell you that things were not done as smoothly. And in fact, we were having difficulties with having our accounts audited set a couple of years, at least a couple of years before um, 2018, probably 2016, 2015. So it's not correct to say that, that 2017, 18 was the only audit that did not was not completed on time. Uh, that's not correct. Um, going back to, you know, um, misjudgments, I, I've accepted we underestimated the impact of the asset register. And this came to light because uh, we sold an, a, 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 an asset, a strip of land, for £200,000 which had been given a narrow asset value back in 2009. And that's what caused the external auditor to want to examine the asset register more closely. And that was not foreseen when we started in last September to audit the 2018-19. So that's why I say I underestimated, we all underestimated the work involved because at the time when we started, and we did, if you go back to the Audit and Corporate Governance Committee of last September, we informed them that we had taken on extra staff to do this, but it was clear that that extra staff was not enough to actually meet the demand when we were challenged on our asset register, which did not occur then. It was not until, I think, around Christmas that we were challenged on the asset register. So as I say, by that time, it was extremely difficult to get additional, audit, additional account staff who knew, who were familiar with asset registers to, to help us. And of course, you will also remember that at that time, we were in the process of distributing government grants to businesses in the district. And that also took time of our finance team. And the priority, and quite rightly, was to do that rather than the audit, because we felt that our businesses needed to get their grants quickly, um, rather than divert that resource to the audit. Thank you, and, we, and, and that's all explained in these reports, We're not hiding anything about that. Thank you, Thank you Councillor John Williams. Councillor Deborah Roberts. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, and I really cannot allow the portfolio holder to get the way we're trying to uh, lead us down a line through you, Chairman, um, of um, we're only here to talk about 2018 stroke 19, because quite clearly the supplementary information that we have in front of us um, is actually quite clearly on that page too. South Cambridge District Council audit progress report right up to the 20th of September this year. 
So we are talking about uh, the whole of these three and a half years in which the Liberal Democrats have been in control of this council. And uh, <laughs> I find it amazing to think um, that you think you can get away with um, saying to us um, that, oh, well, it's very difficult, etc., etc. et cetera. It's a question of priorities, Chairman. And a priority of a public body spending other people's money should be that its accounts are up to date. It's spending that money. And if it doesn't know what it actually can prove that it has to spend, then it's actually probably ultra vires. It's probably not legally Councilor doing Roberts, things right. Do you have a question? Yes, and my question is, given the fact that you did not know, and still don't really know, what your true worth is, or the true worth of your residents' money is, um, do you think it was very wise to also um, go on a great spending spree um, of buying up properties um, in Cambridge City at the cost of millions and millions and millions and millions of pounds when you didn't know what you actually had in your bank account. Would you do that with your private finances, Councillor Williams? Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor John Williams. Uh, we do know what's in our reserves. And actually, if you look at, take this into context, the actual amount of difference involved is within the margin of error. Um, so therefore, our accounts I can say quite honestly that the financial situation of this council is very firm and we do know how much money we have in our reserves and we do know how that money is being spent and that uh, that is reported quite regularly to this authority through the cabinet. So, you know, I, 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 I say again that this is... The delay to the 1819 accounts has come about Absolutely. because we underestimated the amount of work that would be involved because we were not aware when we embarked on, on auditing the 1819 accounts, we were not aware of the problems with our asset register. And, and as I say, we are now working because I, like everybody else, want to make sure that we can present our council taxpayers with audited accounts and we are working as quickly and as we can to bring this to a close and to get on top of this. Thank you Councillor Williams. Councillor Roberts. Thank you Chairman. Will this just be a clarification? It will be a clarification. Um, given the fact that um, you have had three and a half years in which to do this. Where were your priorities? Um, wh what your priority should have been to get the accounts up to date. Um, you're like the European Union who tried this trick for years and years and years while it spent and spent and spent. It's not acceptable and you should have prioritized and I don't honestly believe that even now they are prioritizing. Do you have a question, Councillor Roberts? It didn't sound like one. Are you prioritising this above everything? Because you. if you are, you. you should be putting much more um, officers in here. I feel really sorry Thank for you, the Councillor officers. Roberts. They've done a professional job and they're not being supported. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor John Williams, through me, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, can I sort of... It's a bit difficult when the opposition don't understand accountancy. We, we, we have been here three and a half years, but... You cannot start auditing accounts before the end of the financial year. That's a fact. You cannot, um, it then takes, norm, in normal circumstances, it would take us about four months to audit those accounts. So we wouldn't start, in normal circumstances, auditing the 2017-18 accounts until around the September 2018. Okay, so that's six months of the three three years gone already. It then took us two years to sort out the mess of the 2017-18 accounts. And you then can't start looking at the 2018-19 accounts until you've done that. 
and the 2017-18 accounts were not signed off until last July. After an enormous amount of work was undertaken by the officers of this council to bring those accounts into some sort of shape. So we are really, if we're, we're really looking at the situation since last September, and I apologise that we didn't get it right when we said last September that we would do this by July. I accept that because we did not appreciate the amount of effort that would be involved in sorting out the asset register. Now we do know that, we have put additional resources in. In fact, last September we said we were putting additional resources in. There was a report to that committee from uh, the head of finance uh, explaining that we were bringing in more people. And, you know, we are now on course to try and complete the 18, 19 accounts by the end of next month. And then we are putting a plan together to ensure that we can get the remaining two uh, years signed off as quickly as possible by working with the external order and putting more resource in to enable us to do that. Councillor Bygod, do you want to come back? Uh, thank you, Chairman. It's a point of order. Is it appropriate under uh, Could section... Could I just ask which point of order you're referring to, Councillor Bygod? Section 3.2 in the General Code of Conduct, is it appropriate for the lead member to say that the members of the opposition don't understand accounting? Thank you. I think it was a general comment um, prompted, yeah, no, prompted by the questions that had been raised. Uh, uh, that chair. was my impression given to me by the questions that have so far been put to me. Thank you. We'll move on with the debate. Councillor Bunty Waters. Thank you, Chair, and uh, through you. Um, following on from Councillor Wright and Councillor Roberts, and from the responses from the lead member for finance, for finance um, how many FTEs are currently working on this, uh, say, compared to 12 months ago? Thank you, Councillor Waters. Councillor John Williams. Um, I, can I defer to... Um, Mr. Maddock, on that to get the actual numbers correct, because I wasn't, I'm not absolutely, can't absolutely remember where we were 12 months ago. Because at that time we would have been working on the 2017-18 um, accounts. Mr. Maddock, are you able to assist? Please do draw your uh, microphone a little closer to our camera. <laughs> Is that working? Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, thank you, uh, through the chair. Um, I was just asking because uh, it's a critical issue now, I think, um, with the resources that are needed. And I was asking how many FTEs are currently working on this compared to 12 months ago? Right, so at the moment, um, we've got two, we've got two people who are working on the accounts. There's one, there's one person who's working on 1819 at the moment. Uh, they are supported by a number of others who provide information to the auditors. So we have a dedicated resource who is completing the actual statement of accounts. But then there's obviously a number of other people involved in the support of that. Now, um, we have got um, one dedicated resource who is partly on the asset register and partly on other things. We have uh, another person who's fully on the asset register and then obviously a number of accountants that are, are supporting the audit as and when required. So we have, got, we have got a number of people who are involved in the process and that those resources are provided as and when we need. Now going forward for, for 1920, the plan is to um, start the audit during January 2022. So prior to doing that, we would need to make sure we have enough resources in to make sure that we can meet that audit. So basically, the, the, the plan is that as soon as we've got 18, 19 signed off, we get the resources in place to get the 19, 20 accounts up to date and then move on with the rest of the timetable. 
Mr. Murdoch, the question was compared to last year. I mean, is Councillor so, Waters, do you feel that's been answered by, because last so, year is last year's accounts, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is, Chair, yes. Okay. So that answers your question, I think, does it not? It's mind blowing, Chair. Uh, Councillor Shrabona Bhattacharya. Yeah, well, yes, thank you. Uh, my, uh, my fellow councillor colleague already, already has replied my answer. So my question was not so, uh, not so technical. I was just asking, do you accept this mistake? Do you really feel, uh, do you really feel sorry about what happened? Do you think that you can, you can ask for an apology? What you uh, and and that you and that you already he has done it. Do you think that you will say an apology to the people you are representing here today? I think uh, if I heard you correctly, Councillor uh, Bhattacharya, um, you were saying, do you feel somebody is, is 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 deserves an apology? Is that right? Yes. And so did you have a feeling of who you felt might deserve an apology? I'm asking to Councillor John Williams. I don't, who do you, do you think, think you, sorry, did you have an impression of who you thought was due an apology? Yes, he said that he took it under, he did underestimated the, his, his work and he already said that he has been apologistic. So do you really feel sorry to the people you are representing here today in the council chamber? So are you sorry, saying sorry to the people who you represent here today? Councillor John Williams. Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, I've apologised twice now. I apologised in my opening statement and I apologised in answering one of the questions. Which is in a public meeting. Which is, yes, so thank I've apologised. Thank you, Councillor Yeah, Williams. thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, we have Councillor Gavin Clayton online. I'm I apologise if you've had a wait, Councillor Clayton. Are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm looking back at uh, thinking about what's being said about the 2017-18 accounts and how that ran on to a point where the financial systems were changed midway through 2018-19. So I wonder whether the, that, that decision to change the financial management systems exacerbated and made worse the the condition that the accounts were that you inherited from the from the previous administration. But what I really want to know is if the deadline that the accountants have now given is missed, what are the impacts on the services for the most disadvantaged residents in South Cambridgeshire if they invoke Section 24, Schedule 7? Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Clayton. Councillor John Williams. Um, has no impact on our services. Okay, and this, this is about um, auditing our accounts from two years ago. Uh, this, is, this, this is the accounts of this council, the first year that we um, took the council over, back in 2018-19. This is what these accounts are about. Um, since those since that period, there's been an enormous amount of change in this council. Uh, we're going through a period of transformation. Um, as you quite rightly say, uh, we have changed the accountancy system. We've put it on to, um, uh, uh, we're using uh, more up-to-date uh, software. We're making sure that it can, is complying with current um, um, accountancy standards. All that takes time. It didn't help, of course, that in transferring those assets, um, we, we, we came across this particular problem with the valuation, but it had to be done sometime. If it wasn't done, if it wasn't done this year, it would have been done next year. Um, and so, you know, unfortunately, we're facing something which we were gonna face, um, Regrettably, and I've apologised that we underestimated the amount of work that was involved, and that's why we failed to meet the July 
deadline for the 1819 accounts and why we're here where we are at the moment. But I'm quite determined. I know the finance team um, is also determined that, that, that we get this sorted as soon as possible because we don't want to be in a position of not being able to have our accounts audited. We don't want to be in that situation. It's not where we want to be. Um, but, you know, we are where we are because, you know, when we came in, we didn't take over a situation where we had accounts already and to be audited and audited on time. If those 17, 18 accounts had been able to have been audited on time, we would not be in this position. Thank you, Councillor John Williams. Uh, we are drawing to the end of the question. So, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Chair. Through yourself, um, before I go on to my questions, I'd like to first note the work that Councillor Mason has done as Chair of the Audit Committee. He's, um, I know, been meeting regularly with the auditors and keeping us all informed, of which we are sincerely grateful. So I thought that was worthy of note, Chair. Um, the Fixed Asset Register has been re referred to quite a, quite a lot today, um, and reference has been said that it came to light over a piece of land that was sold in 1819. But if you go through the minutes, you'll, re you'll see back to July 2018 that the fixed asset register and issues with it was being raised well before the sale of that land. And I, I do know that, Chairman, because I raised it myself in, in that meeting, along with several other things. Um, so this has been going on a previous time, and the 18 accounts are relevant because had they done, been done quicker than the 19 and so on, as the lead member has explained, you cannot start one year to the next, so it is very relevant. We've also had repeatedly since July 18 in the, min in the minutes about lack of officers and resource being quoted and lack of continuity with reference to officers leaving without actually giving us their working papers and therefore um, having to redo work. We know that the ledger system, to those in finance, to change a ledger system halfway through a year and for a period is like nails down a blackboard. It's, it's excruciating. Um, we've also had a succession of people, which means a severe lack of continuity. We've had three chief execs, all section 151 officers, we have the splitting of the city service. The officers we have in place now, I, I could not commend enough on their professional abilities, but they are individuals with an you know, an amount of capacity. And we are asking more and more of our finance department with the investment decisions to be made. So with all this in mind, <laughs> lessons need to be learned. No more changes of ledgers halfway through. No more tit-for-tat games. We've known the fixed asset register problem since July 18. We've known the resource problem. It hasn't been resolved. So we want to know that the resources are given and we want assurances that actually, rather than just blaming other people, that the administration does recognise the lessons that need to be learned from their actions, Chair, and that they will not be repeating those. Because at the end of the day, that's what we need. The taxpayers want us to deal with this issue. So have lessons been learned? And will those be taken seriously? Or will we carry on with this political tit for tat that we've seen from the lead member today? Um, I haven't witnessed any tit for tat. Um, he claimed we aren't competent, which actually is against the scope of questions that we were to ask him, Chair, if you look at the Constitution you are not allowed to bring into the question the competence of a councillor or officer. As I said at the time, I think it was a response to the questions that were being asked. A bit like when I wasn't worthy of a response. Oh. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to ask a question or speak? We'll come to the seconder. Okay, so Councillor Neil Goff. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so I think we've had a, a thorough discussion of the issues relating to these 1819 um,
the courts uh, and the council. Um, I thank. Uh, I also thank uh, audit and governments for their work in this process, uh, and also um, the auditors for doing their job in sort of highlighting um, the the issues as well. Um, it is it is clearly appropriate, important, and right that the council understands uh, the reasons uh, for the delay in these accounts, and I think we have done that um, this evening uh, and explained the consequent the, the, the causes of, of, of the delay. I think the report um, actually very helpfully and very transparently uh, highlights uh, a number of issues which cause this. Um, decisions which have been taken or were taken which turned out to be underestimated in terms of their complexity and the time which they took, which I think uh, into the credit of, of those involved, they, that uh, the consequence of those decisions haven't been ducked. Uh, they've been acknowledged in the report. Um, there have also been uh, circumstances such as the pandemic and the need to support uh, the activities of the finance team in that area. Uh, which have also contributed, which couldn't have been anticipated. Uh, and the, the, there's a number of issues being talked about in terms of continuity. And I think you know, my observation from my professional experience is that the important thing here is not continuity of people, it is continuity of process. And in fact, if you need continuity of people to achieve continuity of process, the process is all one. And I think that what has been undertaken here and some of the issues which uh, the Leader of the Opposition referred to in terms of the asset register were proper attempts by officers to get to grips with the weaknesses in the processes around the asset register and improving them and putting them on a solid basis. So there are clearly lessons to be learnt out of this and lessons to be drawn. And as I said before, I don't think those have been ducked in this report. I think they've been acknowledged, and you've heard the lead member for finance acknowledge those, those, those issues. Um, the most important thing is that the outstanding data has now been provided to the, to the auditor, uh, and there is clarity now on the path to completion of the audit. The other important thing associated with it is the commitment of uh, this council to making sure that, that happens, which has been reflected in the motion, which we and I, I will support. Um, so thank you to all the officers uh, and the members who have been involved in the audit, audit and government committee for their efforts in making sure that we do bring this to a satisfactory and efficient closure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Goff. Councillor John Williams, did you wish to sum up? Um, th thank you, uh, Chair. I think uh, my seconder summed it up very well in that it has been a very difficult time for officers of this council, past and present, to come to grips with the external auditing of our accounts. This doesn't just refer to um, our time in here, but the previous administration as well. And there has been difficulty, as I say, in getting those accounts audited on time, despite the huge efforts by all officers, as I say, past and present, to get those signed off. We have learned, um, in fact, uh, at last September, um, the head of finance reported to um, Audit and Corporate Governance that we had uh, learned lessons from 2017-18 to help us with the current audit. But as I say, and I'm quite open about this, we just underestimated the amount of work that was needed to do the current audit. We certainly will not underestimate it going forward for the next two audits. We will have learned, and we have learned from our current experience to make sure that we get our account signed off as quickly as possible, because I said, when I opened um, this uh, debate, that we all appreciate that audited accounts give our 
residents the assurance that their money is being spent correctly. And so we all want these accounts audited. We're not deliberately holding back on not auditing accounts. It's just that we have to make sure that they are done correctly and we are applying as much resource as we can when, we, when it's needed from our experiences to date. Thanks. Thank you very much, Councillor John Williams. So I suggest we now move to a vote. And given that this is an agreed uh, motion, uh, are we content to take this decision by affirmation, members? Does anybody wish to object or to abstain? That's good then, members. Uh, the council therefore agrees this motion by affirmation as amended. Thank you. Uh, it's now eight minutes past seven and I call this meeting to a close.